Pit beef is a staple food and part of any good Baltimoreans diet growing up in the metropolitan area. And like football, crabs, and Natty Bo, it's part of our identity as self-respecting Marylanders. At some point, we've all indulged in a delicious pit beef sandwich. But where do you find these examples of grassroots Baltimore cuisine? Well, at a stand, takeout, or restaurant specializing in pit beef. But where to go? I've taken the guesswork out of that question by visiting all the top pit beef spots in the Baltimore metropolitan area and put their pit beef sandwiches to the test. Now, I may have missed some, but my list is pretty comprehensive. Are these pit beef stops as good as advertised or should you avoid them? Let my taste buds be your guide over the next hour and come with me as I give you in-depth reviews of pit beef across the region. Travel with Trey brings you the ultimate guide to pit beef. Pit Beef was born on the Route 40 corridor, so it only makes sense that Chaps Pit Beef is located right here. Hey guys, well I've made my way to the Mecca of all Pit Beef locations. This is Chaps Famous Pit Beef on Route 40 Pulaski Highway close to Baltimore City, right on the outskirts of the uh, inner city area. If there's any place known for originating pit beef into a kind of staple brand for Maryland, it's gotta be Chaps. Chaps originated in the 1980s, about a decade after the time in which pit beef started emerging in Baltimore. You could find it in shacks, you could find it at roadside stands, all up along the Route 40 corridor where I am right here. It was also very popular in Sparrows Point and with the workers at Bethlehem Steel. Pit Beef owes a lot of its existence to uh, German and Jewish cuisine, um, especially the rolls that it's used for. And uh, Chaps took a lot of that. The owner of Chaps originally was set up in the Dundalk area, but then came over here to Route 40 to start a men's entertainment club. So right on the property of this men's entertainment club is Chaps Pit Beef. Now Chaps has expanded since then. You can find them up in Aberdeen, Maryland. And right behind this building, they're creating a new building. It looks like a restaurant where you can actually go in and sit down. The seating's a little bit more accommodating. They have a couple benches in there that you can sit at and some outside benches here that I'm sitting at but um, it looks like the restaurant is really kicking it up a notch. Chaps has been all over the news. Just like Maryland crabs, pit beef is what Maryland is known for. Oh, and snowballs. We invented the snowball. Chaps has won multiple awards, and celebrities that come into Baltimore are often told to stop at Chaps and uh, try one of the sandwiches. Now today, I'm doing their classic pit beef sandwich. As you can see, I've got the mayo on there, I've got the onion, and it's done medium. They'll tell you beforehand that they have medium and that's usually what you get. I don't believe I've ever had a rare pit beef here, but don't quote me on that. Now, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to try on your pit beef sandwich is horseradish. I know that horseradish is one of those things where you either love it or you hate it. I tend to like it. I don't eat it on much of anything else except pit beef. Now, you may be wondering, does Chaps maintain its reputation solely on the basis of its name? Well, to that I would say no. Unlike Geno's or Pat's in Philadelphia, Chaps continues to put out quality food. That is perfectly cut. This sandwich is so good. I mean, the bun is soft, it's fresh, the meat is tender, there's hardly any fat in this. The onions are perfect. This is the bomb, guys. Looks good, doesn't it? On the 
Pit Beef Trail today. We're at Fast Eddie's in Falston. Any Pit Beef stand guys, you gotta have the proper fixings here. Got onions, and we got the horseradish, and of course all the sauces. All right, guys, so this is what a proper pit beef sandwich should look like. As you can see, we got the onion, we got the mayo, horseradish, and of course, the beef. I prefer mine medium rare. So, let's take a bite of this sucker, see if it's any good. So, it's definitely not as tender as I thought it would be. There's a lot of uh, chewy pieces in here which I don't like. Honestly, this is so chewy and stringy that I have to take really big bites of it just to get it down so I don't choke. It's taking me a little effort to pull that apart. As for the flavor of the beef just standing alone by itself, and I can grab a couple pieces here without anything on it really stringy too. It's kind of flavorless to be honest with you. I mean the best thing about this sandwich here is the bun and that's not saying much. And the sandwich like literally disintegrated in my hands. The bun is falling apart. There's meat. There's onions all over the place. They're not white onions, maybe they are. Um, they could be Vidalia. They're too sweet to be white. They're not sweet enough to be Vidalia. I decided not to do sauces so that I could keep the playing field level. Um, I want everyone to have a fair shot, so I feel like adding sauces introduces a level of complexity and um, may in fact be favorable to some places more than others. This is going to have to be a no-go for me, guys. Thumbs down. It's not a good uh, representation of pit beef in Maryland. Sorry, Fast Eddie's. When I think of Baltimore pit beef, I think of Charcoal Grill because I grew up around this area and this place has been here forever. I'm glad to get back to my roots a little bit and try this place. Um, I haven't been here for such a long time that I couldn't even tell you what it tastes like now. So um, hopefully it's still up there and it's as good as I remember. Yeah, pit beef sandwich on a roll with um, onions, horseradish, and mayo. I will say I have never had a bun hold up this well as the one I'm having now here at Charcoal Grill. And you think that may be uh, something that's just standard, but it's not. This is also a very doughy bun. I don't know if that's the best way to express it, but what it does is it sops up anything that may be juicy or wet about the sandwich. So your mayonnaise, your horseradish, the natural juices from the meat, all of that gets sopped up into it. What's the consequence of that? Very clearly, the consequence is that you get a much drier sandwich. I've realized that as I'm going through it, I'm like, you know, this isn't really as uh, juicy as it needs to be. And I think because the bun is so dense and not as porous as it should be. See, that's a real dense piece of bread. And that porousness that it's lacking would allow the juices to flow more freely into the bun. That's obviously not the case here. So what happens is everything gets stopped up and you get a much drier sandwich. I'm not sure if I like that. Then again, on the other side, I don't want a bun that's so porous that everything drips through it and you go to grab it and it's mushy and kind of disgusting and falling apart in your hands. And there's compromises. The, I mean, the whole thing about eating a pit beef sandwich is that it is an art form here in Baltimore for some more than others but ultimately you have to find that um, 
fine line of negotiation, negotiating between what a bun should do for a sandwich and what it shouldn't do for a sandwich. All right, so my final opinion on charcoal grill, it was acceptable. I mean, it's probably an entry level pit beef sandwich if you're new to the pit beef game and you're looking for something and you're coming to Baltimore and you say, hey, I wanna try something uniquely Baltimore. I wanna try something that they do here and something they do well and it's been around for a long time and there's a tradition, there's heritage, then yeah, certainly go to Charcoal Grill here in Parkville and um, pick up a sandwich. Is it the best sandwich I've ever had? Is it the best example of pit beef? Not by a long shot. And I think that's actually reflected in more of the recent reviews I've seen online um, concerning the establishment and how they put things together. So, of course, it's entirely up to you. That's what food reviews are all about. I give you my opinion. You share yours with me in the comments section below. Let's move on to the next place. And the Tempo Lounge dubs itself the dive that's worth the drive. Hey, it may be if the pit beef is that good. And this place is really no frills. I mean, looks like it's uh, half of a construction site that no one finished. And you enter into this tent here. When you come in, all your fixins are right here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. You usually get them in aluminum foil. A little bit of the horseradish. some mayo on top, and then of course onions. You gotta have the onions for pit beef. Let's break into this bad boy. There's not really any place to sit down outside. There's no benches, so we gotta eat from the comfort of my car, which I don't mind because it's like 92 degrees out right now. All right, guys, so uh, this one looks pretty good, man. It is packed with meat. Um, it's actually cooked medium, so maybe a little bit better than medium rare. All right, so I'm gonna take a bite out of this bad boy. It looks so good. Look at that, filled with meat, onion, mayo. Let's try it. That's really good. So the first thing I notice is there's no fatty meat in there. Um, everything's very tender. Um, the taste is, is very much um, consistent all through. Um, Here's even a piece of the meat with nothing on it. And the meat flavor should be a little bit sweet. This one's not smoked. I do like the sweetness. That's kind of a staple, I feel, of the Baltimore pit beef sandwich. It's not chewy. It's not sinewy. It breaks apart really well. I'm almost through the sandwich and um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, the bun is surprisingly good. Um, got it like on a Kaiser roll. It's definitely not something that tastes like, um, it's like mass manufactured from a grocery store. Although I don't know where they get their buns. I don't know if they make them, but um, that's definitely good. I'm a big fan of onions and I would say that these onions, yeah, they're just okay. I mean, of course the, the rule of thumb is with a good pit beef sandwich is you have raw onions. You don't do fried onions, you do raw onions. If you get an onion that has absolutely no taste, they've used the wrong kind of onion, at least in my opinion, in my experience. French fries are also a staple food whenever you're having your, your pit beef. You're gonna find them anywhere, at pit beef stands, pit beef stores, um, restaurants. Here's the French fries. Now, I like my French fries well done. Not to the point where they're super crispy, but they can't be mushy. These fries, they're kind of like on the edge of both. So far, this one's really good. I found it very enjoyable. I thought the sandwich wasn't tough to get through. Wasn't a lot of sinewy parts or fat, grizzle, whatever. Um, the meat was cooked pretty consistent all the way through. I didn't find a lot of pieces that were, actually I didn't find any pieces that were overcooked. And um, 
not a lot of um, real pink pieces either undercooked. So if you're in Essex, Meat Man, Pit Beef, definitely a good place to stop. I'll vouch for them. And um, hey, man, I got to get going though. I got to finish this. So I'll talk to you later. Hey guys, I'm at Jake's Grill today and I'm really excited for this one because I've only heard good things about this place. Very positive reviews and they've also had um, a little bit of uh, national recognition as well. The best pit beef sandwich in the world except it ain't, you ain't no good for about an hour after you eat one because you're so happy you can't move. <laughs> Are you local here? Yeah. Yeah, original, born and bred? Yeah. Awesome. I used, to, I used to get sandwiches from his daddy a long time ago. Oh, really? Did your dad own this place? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, awesome. we've, been doing, uh, we've been doing it 30 years, almost 30 years. My God. I feel like I've died and gone to barbecue heaven here. Ribs and stuff like that over here. Oh, my God. And so let's get into this pit beef sandwich here. This guy is piled high. This is amazingly tender. There's not a fat piece on it. Everyone comes up here. Everyone pulls up here. It's like a little roadside stand um, with a house attached to it where you go and you actually order the food and pay for it. But on the front end, they're out there. They're barbecuing the meats. And the smell just attracts people for miles. I can't imagine that it wouldn't. It kind of reminds me the look of the place. Like something in Tennessee. Like if you're... I don't know, if you're going through uh, Gatlinburg or on your way to Nashville or something, maybe even Appalachia as well, but that's the kind of vibe it has here, and it's actually in a more uh, suburban area here in Maryland. The pit beef, it's on another level. I haven't had anything this good with regard to pit beef in a long time. Jake's Grill has earned national recognition from Food & Wine magazine. They did an article on the best barbecue joints in every state, and Jake's won it for the state of Maryland. That's high praise, and well-deserved. I might finish this whole thing, and um, unfortunately, my dogs aren't going to get any of it. <laughs> About 10 miles north of Chaps is this little place called Charcoal Style. I'm really excited to try it out. This inconspicuous place has been serving up some of the best pit beef in Baltimore County for years. This place is more like a roadside shack. Uh, they have outside seating, but they don't have seating on the inside. And this is what their pit beef sandwich looks like. And I think the first thing you'll notice is there's a lot of meat in this sandwich right here. I mean, it is just falling off the bun, which means it's either gonna be extremely juicy or it's gonna be dried out. It's hard to say at this point. I will mention that when I ordered the sandwich, uh, they asked me what I wanted on it, so I didn't have the option to add my own condiments. I got mine with the uh, horseradish, onions, and mayo, and I really, really like the horseradish here. Okay, here we go. First bite. First impressions are not bad. Um, the meat is medium rare, again, so that's not bad. I like the flavoring on this meat. In fact, I would say it's probably just a tad bit more flavorful than Chaps. The only concern I have with the meat though, however, is that it is dried out much more. Um, I tend to like a little bit of juiciness because your pit beef is usually cooked at high heat, which means that it does have a tendency to dry out quicker than say a ribeye or um, if you're making a brisket. So those are things you have to watch out for because when you have a thinner piece of meat at high heat, you have to cook it quicker so that it retains some of its juiciness. As for the bun, I didn't break that. It's just breaking apart. 
which means it's probably on the verge of going stale, although it still has a softness to it. The onions, I'm gonna pull one out and show you what they should look like. The onions are better than chaps. Without a doubt. Well, that's another pit beef place in the books. That was very satisfying. We got a bunch more to do, so let's get going. What's up, guys? Today we are at Cruiser's Pit Beef. And um, I've met Cruiser. He's a really decent guy. Uh, he told me about the history of pit beef and how he's had his hand in a lot of the uh, pit beef stands that have originated out of Baltimore. And that was pretty cool. So I went in there, I got a pit beef sandwich, I got some french fries, also got a mess of sauces. They got some really cool sauce. I was really, really interested in their moonshine sauce. So I can't wait to try that. Yeah, so I got my sandwich. Why am I in the car? Well couple reasons. There wasn't really outside seating that I could tell. Maybe there was somewhere around the side of the building, but I didn't see it. Um, there is inside seating, but unfortunately they're playing a lot of music in there and I don't want to be demonetized. It's just a sad fact of uh, life of a YouTuber. So uh, here we are and uh, let's get into the pit beef. What's the best pit beef in Maryland? I've tried. I've been a PA. I've been many places, and this is one of the best places I've worked. Okay. It's amazing up here, and one of the best people I've had. Okay. Got my sandwich right here. Let's check this bad boy out. That is a good-looking sandwich. Look at that. Got this guy hanging here. That's okay. That is literally a handful. A handful of pit beef. My first thought from my first bite is that the meat is definitely juicier than some of the other places I, where I've had it. And there's a bit of a moistness to it, which I like. Once you get a full bite with the onions and the tiger sauce and the horseradish with the meat all mixing together, it's something really, really good. Now, I love onions. I eat onions just about on everything from salads to steaks. These onions, they're perfect. They're fresh, got a little saute to them, nice flavor, a little bit of like snap at the front end. Oh, and uh, might I mention the bun? It's not falling apart. I've been to a couple places where the bun starts breaking the more that uh, pressure is applied to it. It shouldn't be the case. A nice soft bun, a nice fresh bun, should be a little bit more malleable in your hand. This place is dangerous. If I actually lived around here, I might be here all the time. I gotta tell you about these french fries. I'm a french fry nut, by the way. I think I need to do a video just on french fries alone. Look at these guys. Hmm. So all I can say, guys, is if you're out and about and you're down near Edgemere, stop into Cruisers. I promise you won't regret it. This place is excellent. When you're talking about the best pit beef in the Baltimore metropolitan area, Cruisers needs to be on that list. And you need to do yourself a favor and stop on by. Now on to the next spot. So I'm hoping for some good quality pit beef to start off the weekend. How you doing? Hello. How are you? Good. All right. Can I get a pit beef sandwich, please? Kaiser roll. White uh, Kaiser roll. Yeah. Anything on it? Um, let me do horseradish, mm -hmm. onions, and uh, mayo, please. Okay. This is your 10:30 a.m. line. So there's no seating outside near the pit beef stand. Um, they told me I could come inside to the tavern. So I'm in the tavern and um, got my sandwich ready. Let's take a look. Look at that guy. So I've got my Kaiser bun. I've got my pit beef. Got my mayo. Oh, there's my onions. I hope you can see that. 
onions, and horseradish. So let's try the meat by itself. It's good. Cooked again to medium heat. All right, here we go, first bite. As far as I'm concerned, Baker's has created another winner. It is definitely a competitive pit beef environment in Baltimore. This is really good. Also, the sandwich itself is absolutely stacked. Look at this. My only negative takeaways would be that the onions aren't as flavorful as they are in charcoal style in some other places I've been to. And the meat is a little dry. It's thin enough that the dryness doesn't matter, but kind of like the juiciness a little bit more. Again, it's a real tough negotiation when you're working with high heat and you're cutting the meat this thin. I'm at Andy Nelson's in Timonia, Maryland. Uh, this place has been around for a long, long time, and um, when I grew up around this area, it was a hop, skip, and a jump away. So I'm going to show you what they do with their pit beef and their french fries, which is uh, quite a different take because uh got these uh, kind of steak fry cuts, which you usually don't get if you're going to get um, pit beef. The first thing I want to note about Andy Nelson's pit beef is this. Now you notice it's a little pink, isn't it? Yeah, so this is kind of breaching on rare, medium rare to me. Not particularly something that I like, and um, they don't really ask you how you'd like it prepared, and they don't really tell you how they're going to prepare it. This may be a turnoff for a lot of people, but the proof is in the pudding, or in this case, the pit beef. Let's take a bite. Well, it's just as I suspected. When you're sitting in the range of rare and medium rare, ultimately, you're gonna get chewy pit beef. And that's what we've got here, guys. This stuff, it's a little bit chewy. A Couple other things I noticed, and maybe you'll notice too. You see the uh, mayonnaise there? You see how the bun is breaking apart right here? That really comes down to a lack of freshness. Buns shouldn't be breaking up like that when you add condiment sauce on them. You want to talk about your fatty meat? Here you go. See that? See that white? That's fat. That's not a good thing. You should be getting that fat out of there before it gets into your stomach. Not a favorite of mine at all. Now, depending on your preparation method, you may have a problem between rare, medium, rare, and medium really depends upon what you like. Um, in my opinion, it should always be verging on medium to medium rare. Pit beef is cooked at a very high heat. That very high heat is going to usually char the outside or cook the outside before it gets into the inside. That's one of the reasons why you will sometimes see rare beef on the inside, and when they're cutting from the outside, you're gonna get more of a charred texture or more of a well done texture. The problem with that is most people tend to like medium and a little bit above. They want to stick in that kind of medium range. You're not going to get that with a lot of pit beef, and you're not going to get that at Andy Nelson's. And of course, the rarer the meat, the more difficult it is to chew. Sometimes you'll find yourself wanting to take a bite, and then you realize you're pulling off all this other meat because rare meat also doesn't tear well from other parts of the meat so it takes a whole slab of meat with it and you find your mouth stuffed with a piece of meat that you have to swallow so you don't choke i don't know what the hell is all over these fries but no they're different if i were looking for pit beef this definitely would not be my first stop this is my disappointment you want to see that white part that's not meat you want to eat that's fat too many rare pieces, too many fatty pieces. I can't eat this anymore. Today I'm all the way 
in Catonsville, we're west of Baltimore, and I'm at Pioneer Pit Beef because they claim, like in their slogan, they're world class and nobody does it better. Well, again, we're about to test that theory. I got the regular pit beef sandwich and they gave me the choice of how my meat was prepared. I decided to do medium rare with some onions, horseradish, and mayo to top it off. So it looks beautiful. Let's try it. My first thoughts for this one is it's a great bun, holds well. The meat is very tasty. It's got a lot of flavor to it. It's got some burnt edges there, which I really, really like. I don't know if the video is picking it up. A little stringy in some areas, but that's to be anticipated if you get your meat prepared medium rare. So far, so good. I'm about halfway into it. Still getting a little stringiness, but as you can see, I ordered medium rare. This is more medium to me. It's not medium rare. So be warned. You may get it cooked a little bit more than you want if you come to Pioneer. Here's another casualty of war. Rest in peace, sandwich. Except for the occasional piece of fat, Pioneer's Pit Beef is a solid choice. Definitely a great place to start if you're new to the Pit Beef game in Maryland and you're looking for something suitable that you can get into the conversation with. I um, enjoyed the onions. I thought that they were flavorful. Horseradish wasn't overpowering. Mayo was just right. Bun didn't break up in my hand and the meat was flavorful. Those are all the areas you want to look for when you're getting your pit beef sandwich. All right, Charcoal Deli. Our next stop it says to eat ribs, but uh, we're gonna go for the pit beef today. So from Catonsville to Cockeysville, we've made our way across the county and we are at Charcoal Deli. Now, this is another place that has a familiar feel. It's a stand, you order your food from the outside. A good sign is always that you get to tell them how you want your meat prepared. So I got medium rare, of course, because if you remember the original way that this meat was prepared was a quick flame, high heat, so that the outside got seared and the inside stayed a bit red. It's just the way it is, but people liked it enough that it became a Baltimore thing. So of course I've had many different versions with uh, many different temperature styles, um, well done all the way down to almost rare. Um, so we're here and I'm excited to see what they have presented. This is the pit beef sandwich. The bun looks nice. We've got our mayo on the inside. We've got just a little bit of onions, not too many. Usually I'm used to more. And we've got the horseradish. So there it is. Horseradish has made the bun soggy already. Hopefully that's not a detriment to the taste. Let's try it. So the first thing I noticed in terms of beef and my preference for medium rare beef, that does not cut it. This is medium. And while it's not too bad to chew, it's a bit sinewy. By sinewy, I mean that the meat takes a little bit more time to tear with your teeth. So in terms of uh, the meat itself, I'm not detecting too much of a singe on it. Um, usually when you have the pit beef, you're gonna have the outside, it's gonna have a little char to it. I'm not seeing that at all. The onions are finely chopped red onions. Um, I don't even know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of red in there indicating the type of onion. They have a little bit more flavor than the meat. I would say the best thing about the place are the french fries. Done very well. Uh, not well done, but done very well. I got about halfway through this sandwich. It's not my favorite. My final assessment, um, it was cooked to order, but um, it's the wrong temperature. Um, 
the onions are too thin, the mayonnaise is fine, but um, the horseradish is, is very difficult to taste. It's kind of already soaked into the bun. I think I would have preferred to have had it on the side and done it myself. The meat is not as tender as it should be, and probably the, the biggest negative here is that the meat just doesn't have enough flavor for me. So for all these reasons, I can't recommend Charcoal Deli. This is not where you're going to find the quintessential pit beef experience. Sorry. All right, guys, while I'm in here, I'm most likely going to have to turn to voiceovers because there's too much background noise and I'm going to be demonetized if I don't. The Rolling Grill found its way onto my radar fairly late in the game as I was compiling a list of places to visit, but in retrospect, I'm glad I did. It's a place where pink isn't a dirty word, and for some reason, that defies practical logic. The sandwich with the pink meat was one of the tenderest, user-friendly sandwiches I had in my entire pit beef journey. There were a few residual cracks in the bun, but all in all, it held up its structure and there was hardly any condiment bleed through. And given all that, it sure was tasty. You can taste the smoke coming right off of this, which means it's super fresh. Sometimes pit beef will sit around for a long time and they'll just cut off of it. And because of that, you're not gonna get that smoky flavor. Here, it's just the opposite. It's really good. Can't say enough good things about it. Never even heard of it until this month. Up here in Nottingham, Maryland, man, they just get pit beef right. Definitely worth checking out. I've arrived in Dundalk, Maryland on this beautiful sunny day. I'm here for one thing and one thing only, pit beef. Can I get a pit beef sandwich, please? Pit beef sandwich? Yeah, with uh, large fries. With large fries? Yeah. Only and uh, medium rare. Medium rare. Okay. And a Kaiser roll behind. Kaiser roll, yeah. Okay. Onions, horseradish, and mayo. When you think of middle class neighborhoods, you have to think of Dundalk, Maryland. And when you think of pit beef, there's only one name in Dundalk that ranks above the rest. That's Smokin' Joe's Grill. And I'm here in the heart of Dundalk today to try their pit beef sandwich. Is it good? Can it compete with all the other pit beef experiences I've had? I'm here to find out. All right, first things first, the pit beef. Ta-da, here we go. Comes out open face. My onions come out in uh, some saran wrap here. And of course the horseradish. And you got your mayo. What do you think I don't have are utensils. Do you have utensils? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Got the ketchup for my french fries. Homemade barbecue sauce too, if you want to try some? Sure, okay. So the manager just offered me some homemade barbecue sauce. Uh, and this is our tiger sauce, it's the horseradish sauce. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank uh, you so much. No barbecue and tiger sauce. All right, so we're going to start by putting mayo on there, then some horseradish. Why am I unpacking onions? And we take the sandwich, and we plop it on there. Sandwich looks pretty good, huh? All right, here we go. First bite, bon appetit. First impression, extraordinarily juicy or wet. I can't tell. Definitely feels moist though. Again, I asked for medium rare and got more of a uh, medium beef. The bread is entirely too soggy. That's the bun. So it's falling apart immediately as soon as I put any pressure on the bun with my fingers. Um, this moisture is throwing me off. I like juiciness, but 
not particularly sure about the level of moisture in this one. I mean, it does help it fall apart, but it's almost too moist. It's wet. I have taken now three bites into the sandwich. This is what it looks like. You see that? Do you know why that's happening? It's so moist that the bun can't absorb it properly. And so you get this. This is not a good sign. I have to wipe my hands off because they're so moist from holding the bun because everything is going right through the bun and onto my hands. Personal opinion about the meat. It's wet, it's moist. Juicy and wet are not the same thing. This is actually wet. Um, it tears apart fine because it's so moist. It's basically overcooked. I can use some salt or something. It's not flavorful, it's pretty bland. This may be the worst pit beef I've ever had. I don't even like the french fries. They've got some weird kind of vinegar aftertaste to them. I didn't ask for vinegar. It's probably the cooking oil that these things are uh, fried in. It's very strange. I can't put my finger on it. All right, about halfway through and my sandwich has basically uh, completely fallen apart. This is what it looks like. I was really expecting better given that Dumb Dog is kind of the heart and soul of Blue Collar Maryland. And pit beef originated as a blue collar dish. Can everything really be as bad as I'm making it out to be? The horseradish tastes foul or something. That horseradish is horrible. I can't even describe that taste to you. Is there anything redeeming about this place? Let's try the tiger sauce. Tiger sauce isn't bad. So there, if you're coming to uh, Smoking Joe's Grill, get yourself a ramekin of tiger sauce. That, my friends, was the most disappointing pit beef experience I've ever had. I can't recommend this place at all. What do you call squash that's in the middle of the road? Squash. Again, I'm faced with a dilemma. Try to eat in here with the blaring television in the background or take it to my car. I think in this instance I'm going to take it to my car because this place is a little small. From Dundalk, we've moved on to Middle River. I'm at Smokehouse Pit Beef. This, as far as I know, is the standard pit beef experience in Middle River. They're the only ones that advertise themselves as being a true pit beef place. So I had to stop in and try it. Uh, I have to admit, I'm not familiar with the place. I've never been here before, but a lot of these places I've never been. You usually just do things in your own area. The pit beef sandwich that I took out of there looks phenomenal. The fixings bar, the condiments, onions, horseradish, that's all on the side. That's all for you to take care of. You can specify how you want your meat cooked. I got mine medium rare, as I try to do a lot. The greatest thing of all is what I was given. See this? These are scraps of meat. Whoa, falling out. Look, these are scraps of meat that they had left over and they just gave me this. Now it's not for me. They asked if I had dogs. I have dogs, and so my dogs are going to be very, very happy, so this place gets immediate points. They actually said if you come in here and you ask for scraps, they'll be more than happy to give you them. Might be another reason why you want to try this place, right? The real reason we're here is the pit beef, so let's open this up and see what this looks like. As you see, I have my uh, standard aluminum foil wrapping. Open it up. Bingo. That looks like a monster sandwich. On the inside, got my onions there, 
horseradish, mayo. So now the only thing that this needs is my mouth. So let's stop talking and start eating. So that first bite was not a good one. Didn't get much out of it in terms of flavor. This is extremely stringy. I don't know if you can tell from that. It's moist and it's juicy, but it's juicy minus the flavor. I don't know what that is. I'm trying to find a good place to bite into this thing because I see pieces of fat. Look at this. All right, let's try it again. I know that probably looked disgusting to you. No one wants to sit here and watch me try to get this meat down, but that huge piece that I pulled off, I was only trying to get a fourth of that into my mouth. The problem is this meat is not tearing with my teeth, and that means that this meat is not cooked the way that it should be. I can taste the fat. I mean, the stringiness is out of control. When you're normally going to tear a piece of meat off, you know, you're trying to get just a little bit here. So you're putting pressure here just to get that off. But look, I'm taking that whole string with me into my mouth oftentimes. It just doesn't pull the way that it should. And this is filled with fat in almost every bite. I almost feel sorry for a lot of these places because if they knew who I was, they might have tried better. They might have uh, gotten back there and made sure that I had only the best cuts of meat. But guess what? Then they would be lying because this is really about the average person. And I'm an average guy. So it's about the average person walking in on any given day, even on their worst day. Let's just say a Monday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You should have the same experience in meat that you would if you came in during the dinner rush on a Friday evening. And I'm not getting that. Oh, and by the way, this is a Friday. This is a Friday afternoon. And if this is what they're serving Friday night, I would be eating somewhere else. If you remember earlier in my video when I was at Smoking Joe's Grill in Dundalk, the manager saw me eating and uh, saw my camera rig and my setup. And he quickly came over and offered me some barbecue sauce. I was thinking about that after I left, but I think I know the reason why he was doing that. Because when you're tasting the meat and it's that bland, the only thing you can do is smother it in some kind of sweet, tangy, spicy barbecue sauce. That way, you're covering up the fact that your meat is flavorless and bland. And that's the same thing here, unfortunately. Um, I have really good sauce that I got from there. They have um, two sauces, and the spicier version is actually exceptional. If I put this on my pit beef sandwich, it would make a world of difference. But guess what? That's not how you originally ate pit beef, and that's not how I'm going to eat pit beef. I'm a purist here, so I'm not going to uh, contaminate it with barbecue sauce. Oh, but Trey, you'll say, you put onions on there, you put horseradish, you put mayo. Don't those change the tastes? I'm not talking about eating the meat by itself. I'm talking about a traditional pit beef sandwich. And those are condiments that go with a traditional pit beef sandwich. Yes, there are some people that don't like onions. I get it. Yes, not everyone puts horseradish on there. I get it. Barbecue sauce, though, to me, is anathema. It's something that you don't do. You're changing the nature of the pit beef experience. So, yes, again, I am a purist and... That's how I feel. Agree with me or not, I don't care. Well, I was very disappointed with Smokehouse Pit Beef. Just wasn't my thing. Entirely too stringy, the meat too sinewy. Um, every chew felt like an effort to get it down. Barbecue sauces were good. Of course, you heard my uh, diatribe about using barbecue sauces on your Pit Beef sandwich. The onions I had no complaints about. The horseradish held up. I can't recommend them in good faith, uh, but you may have had a different experience. So, you know, if you've never been here, I would say if you're in the Middle River area, stop by. But um, otherwise, I don't think I would make a special trip or go out of my way to come back for a sandwich here.
So I'm leaving Bird's Nest. I got my fifth beef here. Uh, I'm not going to eat there just because there's a television again in there. It's a little store and um, I don't want to have to compete with the TV in the background. So we're going to take this to my car and uh, give you the best audio visual presentation I can. This one comes to us courtesy of Bird's Nest Barbecue right in the heart of Bel Air, Maryland. So I've got my bag here. Inside the brown bag are going to be your french fries, of course. And then in the premier aluminum foil wrap, we have none other than the pit beef sandwich. Now, this is another place where you can get the pit beef done the way you like it. Mine, I do horseradish, mayo, and onions. So let's take a look at this guy. Yep, looks pretty good. A little bit of onions on there. Horseradish and mayo are mixed. So I asked for medium rare. I am looking at medium. Okay, it is what it is. It may still be good. I tend to go back and forth between medium and medium rare. Anything other than those two, you obviously don't want to do. Too raw or overcooked are the uh, far ends of the spectrum. So let's try some meat here. Pretty solid. And now for the first bite. This is good. The meat tears away cleanly from the rest of the sandwich. It's not overcooked, even though like I said, it's a little uh, more medium than I'm used to. The bun is nice. It's not breaking up in my hand. That's always a plus. If you have a sandwich that has too much moisture, it's just going to absorb into the bun and make a big mess of your hands and every place else. So that's not a bad thing. The onions are good. Horseradish is good. I'll tell you, I really, really like biting into the sandwich because... These are like very thin cut slices of beef, which is perfect. It's got a nice singe on the outside. I'm going to show you that. See that little uh, edge right there with the brown? That's a good singe. That's very good. The meat tears away very easily. There's just something that's very enjoyable about working through a sandwich that doesn't work you over. I don't particularly like tearing chunks of meat with my teeth and having to just gnaw on them. And I certainly don't want to swallow whole pieces of meat because I can't tear it off the sandwich. So these are all pluses. This is a good sandwich, guys. I think the only real negative about this sandwich is that it's a much smaller portion than I'm used to. Um, most of the pit beef places I go to give you a bun with a heaping pile of meat on top of it. They're a little stingier here, but it's okay. I don't need the extra calories. So how do I feel about Bird's Nest Barbecue's take on the Baltimore Classic pit beef sandwich? I'm one bite away from finishing it. Hampstead. We're at Outlaw Barbecue Smokehouse right here on the uh, main stretch of road and it can be quite noisy here but we're going to try to soldier through this and try their version of pit beef. There's always a concern with demonetization. That's when uh, you lose the uh, money you would make on the video because there's somebody's copyrighted song playing in the background. Well this place is a little strange in that they have speakers all on the outside here there's music funneling through their courtyard, but not on the inside. So I gotta fight past that a little bit, and um, hopefully we'll be okay. The music is not too loud. I think I can only hear it. It may just be perceptible to me. But here we go. So the pit beef sandwich 
comes in a classic plastic container. We open it up, and there you go. Got, of course, my french fries. Pit beef sandwich looks absolutely huge. I just want to show you this up close. That's looking pretty good, man. There's the bun on the top. So uh, let's decorate this bad boy. We've got our onions, horseradish, and of course some squeezy packs of mayo. Mike's Amazing Real Mayonnaise. There's an unholy plug. Okay, so I came in here and um, ordered the pit beef. They did not ask me how I wanted it prepared, so I'm gonna say this looks a little medium here. You can see the singe around the outside. Bloop. It's not too bad. I'll put that piece aside. Get my horseradish on here. You know what? I don't think they gave me a fork. There you go. Very stringy onions, very small. Onions come in all shapes and sizes in the pit beef world, so I'm always interested in what I come up with when I travel to these places. And here we go, first bite. Let's hope it's a good one. First impressions, flavorful, tender, the meat is sliced thin. That's how it's got to be with a pit beef sandwich. It breaks apart well from the sandwich, so there's no concern there. I don't see much fat on here, so I'm hoping that's the case throughout. In fact, I don't see any fat. This is a big sandwich. One thing I've noticed almost immediately is that the bun is fresh. It's not breaking apart in my hand. I've had that problem too many times. Too many times for a place that calls itself a pit beef mainstay in the Baltimore metropolitan area. Of the places that I've gone, it just never fails to amaze me how many times I get a, some kind of piece of bread that just falls apart. As soon as you put the mayo on, as soon as you put the onions on, Anything that adds moisture to the sandwich, turning the bun into a mushy mess, but not here. Once again, what most of these places do right is when you get a side of fries, they're usually really, really good. Better than fast food fries. The fries here though, man, they're unconquerable or incomparable. They're very good. Again, this is a big pit beef sandwich, man. This is gonna fill me up at least until dinner. So I finally arrived at my last bite. I have to say, not an ounce of fat anywhere on this sandwich. It was terrific, very good, tasty, cooked perfect. Definitely a top contender for one of the best pit beef sandwiches across the Baltimore metropolitan area. Hampstead, of course, is a little ways out there, so um, you're going to have to make the drive to check out the goods. But I'm glad I did, and uh, man, they do pit beef right. Well, I have to admit, it's been a lot of fun eating my way through some of the best pit beef joints in the Baltimore metropolitan area. I definitely gained 40 pounds in the face and the waist and uh, kind of feeling it, so uh, kind of lay off the meat for a little while after this. But um, in all seriousness, thanks for joining me, guys. As usual, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button so you know when I'm putting out more videos, and make a comment below what you liked, what you disliked, what you didn't agree with, what you agreed with, and uh, is there anything I missed? Let me know. I just had to stop at some point. I just couldn't keep eating all this pit beef. But anyway, thanks for traveling with Trey. I hope to see you soon. And uh, make sure you come back and 
check out all the other wonderful videos I have for you. Thanks again.